Here's my story. Take 95. Why is this? Why is this video so hard? Uh, How do I tell you the story of the last 10 years in 10 minutes? I don't know. I can't do it. I can't do it. What's up, guys? I am John the Potter. Welcome back to another video. It's 2019, and we're back for another year of pottery, of adventures. Who knows? I'm so excited about the possibilities of 2019. Thank you for joining me. This video, you guys have asked, how? what's my story? Where, how did I end up owning a coffee shop with a pottery studio in the basement? And how did I end up here? What's my story? So, that's what this video is. Let's do it. It's gonna be wild. Woo! I need to hide our messy house so that my wife doesn't yell at me when I video. So I'm gonna tell you the whole story like this. Ah! Just kidding. I was born in Phoenix, Arizona. When I was two years old, moved to Texas. Lived from in Texas from until third grade. Then we moved up to Minnesota. I went to high school in Mayer, Minnesota. God, it's weird telling my story to a camera right now. I don't know why I'm having trouble with it. My story. High school, starts in high school. So I took a couple pottery classes in high school, but I was never like that good at it or really into it. I mean, I liked it, but you just don't really get that much time in high school. So for me, high school was all about basketball, sports, you know, golf, football, all that stuff. So I was really into athletics. And then I decided to go to college and I went to Gustavus Adolphus, which is a liberal arts school up in St. Peter, Minnesota. See the shadow of the camera? Is that kind of weird? Is that better? Nope. This is my house, this is where I live, in Waconia. My story, back to my story, went to college and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I went to kind of play basketball at Gustavus and I started off as a business management major, right? Because I didn't really know what I wanted to do and I thought business is gonna give me a lot of options. Quickly realized that like, I wasn't gonna be an NBA basketball player. I thought, you know, college has so much to offer that I think I'm gonna not play basketball. So my junior year, I decided I wanted to study abroad, right? So I went on this study abroad to India and it was called Social Justice, Peace and Development. And so studying abroad there in four months, for four months really kind of opened my eyes to the world, kind of gave me a different perspective on, you know, where was my life heading? So while in India, hey kitty, hey kitty. So because I was in India, I got to register for classes before the rest of the school because I was in an area with limited internet connectivity, even though that might have been a bit of a stretch. So I thought, and since I was going to Gustavus, which is a liberal arts school, I had to take an art credit. So most business majors would take like art history or some other kind of not a fun art class, like all the ceramics and painting and drawing, like those kind of art classes were all filled up with art majors. So. I decided I'm gonna like cheat the system a little bit. I'm gonna try and get into a wheel throwing ceramics class. So I registered for a wheel throwing ceramics class, a class that I never would have gotten into unless I was studying abroad. And the first day of wheel throwing, I was the only non-art major in the class. So there's like 16 kids in the class, 15 of them are art majors, and me, I'm a business major, former basketball player. So the professor was like, John, I, you know, this is a hard class. Like you're gonna have to spend a lot of time in the studio. Do you really think that you're gonna be able to do it? It's like, yeah, I think I can do it. I think, I think I'll think i be okay. By the end of that class, I had thrown about as many pots as the rest of the class combined. I was just like super into it, loved it so much, fell in love with clay, fell in love with the wheel, fell in love with the possibilities of clay, which obviously I still am into that. So after that class, then I did another independent study where I was like doing my own studies, but, and then I did a TA position where I was the teacher's assistant at the studio at Gustavus. Okay, so that leads us to, that was my first ceramics class. My wife, EC, was also in that class. All right, let's go over here. Next piece of that story. So I am a senior. I'm gonna graduate with a business management major. It's too late to switch to an art major, but I have this love of pottery, and it's like, I love pottery so much, I wanna just keep doing it. So how do I do it? My mom says, hey, you gotta visit this coffee shop, Mocha Monkey. It's in Waconia, and they 
One of the owners makes pottery and they serve everything on handmade pottery and they sell the handmade pottery there. I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. So walked into Mocha Monkey and like everything just kind of like collided. Like I saw these handmade pots on the shelves. I saw like behind the counter, all the baristas were using handmade pottery. I thought, I this business is awesome. It combines business, combines pottery, combines just it's just cool, it's just a cool, vibrant business. So I wanted to be a part of it, so I decided I would get a job. So my my friends are getting internships at Target and Cargill and whatever, and I decided I'm gonna be a barista the summer before I graduate from college, right? Oh, it's freezing. All right, let's go inside. So I decided I'm gonna be a barista. This is just like, I'm just all over the place. This story, I don't feel like I'm telling it very well. This door is definitely gonna be locked. Dang it. So I got a job at Mocha Monkey. During this time, I also had kind of built out my parents' basement as a little pottery studio. So that was my first studio. Found a wheel on Craigslist for 800 bucks. Still the wheel that I'm using right now. Found a kiln on Craigslist for 200 bucks. Drove like two hours. This lady had this kiln. She had no idea what she had. Said I'd give her 200 bucks for it. She's like, oh yeah, that's great. It was like a brand new kiln sitter. Fired that thing like 400 times. Okay, back to the story. It's a long story. New studio. Okay, got a job at Moke Monkey as a barista. So I got to know Pam and Mark, who are, were the old owners, and they kind of like pulled me aside one day. They were like, hey, just so you know, we're like thinking about selling the business, Moke Monkey. Keep in mind, I'm 20, 20 years old at this point. 21. And I like get thinking to myself, like, oh, this is like an amazing opportunity. Like, so I literally. Went up to Pam that day that she told me that, was like, I might be interested in buying a coffee shop, Mocha Monkey. She's like, okay, let's see if we can, you know, figure it out. So, over the next seven months, I, we figured out how we could make a sale work. To a 21 year old, I had no money, but I went into a lot of debt and to buy the coffee shop, Mocha Monkey. So, that happened, I took over as the new owner, January 1st, 2011, so that was about eight years ago now. And so all of a sudden I was 21, I had a semester left of school, and I figured out, I like went to my professors at Gustavus, I was like, hey, listen, I'm buying this business, like could we figure out a way that I don't have to be at school so much? So I would go down to school two days a week, I'd go Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'd have like one class that I would go to, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and the weekends I would be at Moke Monkey running this new business that I had. Oh, and then a few years later, we got an opportunity to open a second location in Waconia with a drive-through, so then that's when we opened up our bank location. Right after that happened, we got voted the number one coffee house in Minnesota by WCCO, and that was awesome. And then at some point in there, I moved my studio, this was before we opened the bank, I moved my studio from my parents' house to the basement where I'm working there now. And that, I got from that idea that I stopped at that pottery shop in Montana. So then, after we opened the bank, then we got an opportunity to, op to take over an existing coffee shop and turn that into a Mocha Monkey. So then we did that. That was like two, three years ago. And yeah, and then a couple, last year, I, two years ago, I went on a cross country solo road trip. So I left Minnesota, went to Texas, Arizona, California, drove all through California, did some snowboarding, surfing. Lived in my car for a week, Colorado, and back to Minnesota. And then after that, I kind of like realized that I really just am really passionate and love pottery, and I want to kind of focus my time on doing that. So we kind of reformulated the business a little bit. So now we have managers for each location, between 50 and 60 employees at any given time. And so day to day, I don't really do much for the coffee shop, and I get to focus more on the pottery ceramic part of it. Then I started the YouTube channel about a year ago now. Is that it? Am I, are you all cut up on my story? I really did a terrible, terrible, terrible job of telling this story, I think. I think I'm gonna have to refilm this whole thing because I, I need to, I need to like make a storyboard or write things down or something. So yeah, that's how I bought a coffee shop when I was 21 and how I get to spend most of my time doing pottery now. Sometimes I'm a really good storyteller and other times I'm really like, all over the place disjointed storyteller. If somehow I was able to come up with a video that somehow works, here's the ending. Hit that subscribe button, comment, like, share, all the things. Hit that bell button to be notified. We'll see you in the next video.